Hello everyone, um, I'm just making this little, bit, little video for you just to help you out with your HTML. Um, for part of your course you need to know about what HTML is, I'm going to give you this little video just as a little bit of a step-by-step -step guide as to how to access it and how, also how to use the application too. Uh, feel free to come back to this video at any point as well, so if you need any support always feel free to do so. Um, but apart from that, let's get straight into it. So for part of your course you do need to know about HTML, it's really important. Uh, it stands for Hypertext markup language uh, for your teacher who's given your scenario to you're going to be basing a website around this using this application and think about this being the skeleton of every single kind of website okay so what you're going to be doing is following this guide if i just show this full screen so you can see it um, we're going to be learning about primarily just about the html tags so previously you've learned about using something like rocket cake uh, today you're going to be using the use of something called notepad now to access this application what you'll need to do is press the windows key on your keyboard or press the windows key upon your computer system type in notepad and it'll be the first application on your computer within school. It'll look a little bit different. This is just the one from home. If I click on Notepad, it should open with this application over here with a white screen. That's exactly what I'm looking for now. So following the instructions I've given to you already within the document, what you're going to do is click on File, Save As. From there, I'm gonna locate my documents. Now already, and I recommend that you do this as well, in Documents folder, I created a folder called HTML Site. Okay, so the shortcut to do that is on your keyboard, you go to uh, Windows key, Shift and N, or you can just press Control, Shift and N, it'll create a new folder. Okay, so if you press Control, Shift and N, it'll create a new folder. There is also a new button, a uh, new folder button over here. Call that HTML site. Okay, so because I've already got one, I'm just going to add all of my files within here. So any kind of images or any kind of extra page I can use within there too. I'm going to change this from star.txt. I'm going to call this index.html. Okay. And also, I need to change it to all files instead of text documents. Now, if I save that, what it will do, it will automatically recognize it as a web scripting file, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So, if I go back to my folder where I've saved it in HTML site, you'll notice that this is going to be a web article. So, if I double click onto this one, it'll open up into a web, web browser, which is exactly what I'm after. However, there's nothing on there at all, which is a little bit of a problem. Okay, but our idea is to try and populate it by using our code. Okay, so the codes that I've given to you within this part here is just to give you a little bit of a structure. There are going to be within this document parts where it's called Roundup, and you need to provide your evidence within Class Notebook from what you're doing bit by bit. So whenever you see these red sections, such as here, and another one further down as well, you need to provide your evidence from what you've learned so far from this document. Okay, so let's go back. So if I go to the left hand side and bring this over so I've got two screens at the same time so you can see exactly what I'm doing, I will need to now, because I've saved this document as a HTML, I can now start to construct my web document. Now I don't type any kind of rubbish into there and it will just convert it into a web document. It needs to have some kind of structure and set commands for it as well. Okay, so I use my pointy chevrons which is towards the, uh, just not too far away from the space key. I go for HTML. That's just initiate it. I'm going to go for a head, which is going to be the header of the document. I'm going to go for title. And it doesn't need to be exactly like this, like a big space in between. I've just added this just to show you that it's going to be something completely separate. And in my title, I'm going to say, this is the title of my web page. Okay. Now, for every single tag, once I've finished this, so for example, this being my title tag over here, I would need to close that tag by using the backspace over here as well. So whatever I've got, it just closes it, which means this is going to be something called encapsulated. It means everything within here is going to be part of this title. I'll explain to you in a few moments time exactly what that means. Okay. So the next part is going to be one of the most key parts of the document. It's going to be the body. I'm going to add a little bit more space in between. I have missed off the head over here, so I've got backspace head, which means I've closed that tag. I can add some space into here. It doesn't really affect your documents if you add any space or not. Uh, it just makes it look a little bit neater. So for the body, essentially, this is where all of your main piece of documents, or mainly your uh, part, of the, uh, part of the web page, is going to be existing within here. Okay? So, for example, I want to say this is my... Uh, uh, website 
for my new car show. Okay, so if I wanted something where it's going to be a little bit more uh, based around that, I can build parts around that based around my car showroom. Okay, so I'm going to close my body tag over here. Okay, and I'm also going to close my HTML. Okay. So whenever you see this star icon at the very, very top where it says index and the little star icon, that means it's unsaved. What I can do if I press Control and S, it will save it so I don't have to come back to it again. And now I've added the very, very starting part of my document. So what I'm going to do is go back to my folder. I'm going to open this again. And now I can start to see some changes. So what I'm going to do is have two screens at the side again, just so you can see the difference. And you can see now I can very, very clearly see the main part of my document is going to be here. So this is the website for my new car showroom, which is what I've got right here. Okay, so within the body of the document, this is where you're going to put all of your main key parts. However, where it says this is the title of my web page, that's actually on the tab at the very, very top over here. Okay, so where it says this is the title of my web page is not very, very specific, is it? So we need to change it. So I want to put down on here... Um, uh, no Hill Car Showroom. And if you know exactly where No Hill is, it's absolutely fantastic sports car um, showroom, not too far away from Mainhead. Okay, so same again. So it's index over there. I'm going to press Control and S to save it, and I'm going to refresh over here. And now I can see that my my title has now changed. So I can keep changing it every so often. I can see exactly how it's been developing. Okay, I'm just going to close this for the time being and go to the next section. Okay, so as I scroll down, there's going to be the first part where you've got all these tags. These are going to be the explanations for it. So your teacher will be able to ask you upon what these tags actually mean within the lesson. So for example, you've got HTML, head, title, body being used as well. So they're the main key ones you need to know specifically for this course alone. For the first part that I want to do, there are going to be extra parts you need to add into the body itself. So within this area over here, so I can add as much space as I want to in here, I would like you to try and answer these following questions. So first of all, delete where it says work. This is where I put the contents of my um, my web page. Um, however, I've already changed it. So what actually happens if you put that within there? So just a little bit of an output onto it. Uh, now type in B as a tag and then hello. So that will change the style of your text. I would like you to try that out and see what it does. Uh, can you figure out how to add some italic text and also some underlined text? There are many ways upon how you can actually try and do it. So for example, if I give you a little bit of a hint, this tag is for the bold of your text. So if we go back to that web page again, if I save it first and then go back to my web page, it now comes up bold. So think about it to yourself. What would happen if I tried to use italics or maybe underlined? I want you to try and figure out what that tag is going to be. And also as a little bit of a bonus as well, I want to throw this in. What does the marquee tag do here? So for example, I need to have marquee over here, uh, a little bit of text and then marquee on the other side as well just to finish it all off i would like you to see well i'd like to see what you guys can actually do to try and figure out what that does okay so i'll move on and we've also got a spacing so if i had these pieces of text here and i just wanted to copy these two parts just so you can see the difference between each other okay so exactly the same part and i'm lo looking upon the spacing section over here so i'm going to quickly save it and if i go back to my file see what it does. Now looking at the construct of this on the right hand side you would expect it to be up on the new line but because there's no structure to it regarding where I want that um, part to be within my document it's actually moved to uh, the same line. So what I would need to do for every single kind of piece of uh, changing to my documents I can use something like BR which is short for break so I can have something like this BR And that was essentially, because I've saved it now, essentially just put onto a new line. Okay, there's another thing I can do as well, so I can add a little bit more panache to it. So I can just go for P, which is short for a paragraph. And that was essentially leave a nice little paragraph inside of my documents as well. Okay, 
So if I add that again, it adds, as you can see, a little bit of a spacer in between, and that's gonna be a paragraph. Now imagine if you've got loads of pieces of text within that document, you would need to include some form of structure to it. So try and use these just to add some kind of element to it as well, okay? So the last part I'm gonna show you, uh, just for this section alone, is going to be your images. Now your images are gonna be really, really important, okay? So just be aware that you need to follow these steps very, very particularly, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of problems. So. Please make sure you read the instructions upon here. So for example, I'm just gonna look for a picture of a car. I'm gonna look for a nice little car picture just for a demonstration. So this is an example to show you what you need to look for. However, I'm gonna, within this video, show you exactly what you need to do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna to go to images. I'm gonna search for images upon here. I'm gonna go for Google images. And I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna go for my car. So CLA uh, 200 entry, okay? Uh, which one, it's gonna be that one. So. If I go for this car, now it's a little bit too big, I can see here by the resolution, it's absolutely massive, but if I just right click, go to save image as, and then what I'll need to do, I need to find out where I've saved that one document. So if I go to where I've got a HTML site, or even better, as I mentioned before, go to your documents folder where you've made that folder, HTML site, and at the moment, this name is a little bit stupid. So I'm going to make it a little bit easier for it to, for it to remind myself. So I'll go from Mercedes CLA. Just one word. Nice and easy. Okay. And I've made a note upon here as well. It's going to be a JPG. I'll show you exactly what that is in a few moments time. So if I go for save, it saves to that folder. But as I mentioned before, it's going to be really, really big. So it's going to be causing a little bit of a problem. If you look here, it says Mercedes CLA JFIF. That's going to be really important. But as a reminder, it's best to have JPG. Okay, I'll explain why in a few moments time. So what I'm going to do for the next part, I'm going to show you what you need to do to make sure that image is now going to be represented into this lovely high quality web page that I've worked so hard on. Okay, so this part, this part you can see here, I'm going to have my image in between these two parts here. Okay, so I've got my paragraph, I'm going to add a little bit of a space in there. I'm going to use this structure that I'm going to provide for you right here. Okay, so it says IMG SRC equals and then the name of the image and the file type as well. So if I break that down for you bit by bit, so you've got IMG, short for image, SRC, short for source, and then equals and then whatever the file name is going to be. So if I remember, if I go for IMG SRC, please make sure it's SRC, not SCR. I've seen that loads of times from previously. Speech marks. Mercedes CLA dot J F I F. Okay, and that should pick it up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quick save, and I know for a fact this is probably going to come up with an error. But if I go to my web page over here, it's come up straight away. But the, because the file is actually so big, it's caused a massive error. Okay, so because the image is just so big, it's actually caused a big error. So therefore, I need to find a different file type altogether. So if I go from my previous documents and then refresh, it's gonna come up with the same problem, okay? So what I need to try and do, if I go book a little bit further, there we go. So for my documents, I need to find ideally a GIF, a PNG, or a JPG. If I have anything else, it's gonna cause a, bit of, a little bit of a problem. So I'm gonna go back to my web search and type in .png or .jpg and it'll come with something a little bit more easier to work with, okay? So I'll go for this one, it's a massive image again due to the resolution, so I'm gonna try and find something a little bit easier to use. So I'm gonna go for size, I'm just gonna go for a medium size, so something that's easy to use. Go for this one, perfect size, perfect. I'll go for that one, so save again. Um, it's a web file, so I'll go for save image as. Still come with a web file, so I can't use that one because it's been copyrighted. If I try this one, there we go. It's still come up with a copyright, there we go. So there are some that I can use, there are some that I can't. Let's go for save image as again. There we go, that's more like it. Okay, so it should have the JPG. So I'm just gonna pick down um, CLA. Um, and that should do it. So if we go for save, back into that folder again, you'll notice that if I go back into the folder, I've got two, 
please make sure you try and identify each one. So I'm going to get rid of the old one. So that's my .jfif. If I double click on there, it will recognize it. There we go. And I'm going to try that again. So if I go back into my document itself, is located within the actual source itself. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to make sure that you actually add the location of where that file is going to be. So what I've done, uh, what I've got, I've copied over the C path upon where that is. So essentially what I've just done is gone back to my file, found the image, right clicked on it, and I've gone to properties, and that property will show me where the location of that file is going to be. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to paste after my speech marks where it says IMG SRC. It doesn't matter if it's capital letters or lowercase for this part, it will still work exactly the same. But as you can see, I've got my file, I've got my image already being added into this one, so that's absolutely cool by me. Um, I've got a little bit of a problem because I've got too much space over this part. There we go, so add that in, give it a quick refresh, as it's just a little bit more structured, a little bit more organized, okay? Um, there is a link that I can provide for you just regarding resizing that image as well. So you can set out the resolution upon how big you want that image. It's entirely down to you as well, okay? So try and be creative with this part. Um, just try and work it through bit by bit. Um, understand that it is gonna take a little bit of practice, but just understand that it is gonna be bit by bit process. If you need any support, do feel free to send uh, your teacher a message or within the classroom, please feel free to ask. If you need any help from me as well, please do feel free to send me a message on Microsoft Teams that I can get back to as well. Okay, good luck guys, and I'll speak to you soon.